Hi, I'm Jeff, Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, and today I'm going to be talking about the Aries Training Task Book. Before we get started, I'd just like to say, uh, if you are a member of WCARES and you are not particularly interested in com emergency communications, just let it be known that this is not going to affect you at all. WCARES still wants every member to be a part of the organization. If you don't have an interest, that's fine. We will be conducting WCARES as we have in the past. Now, here's the first page. And uh, as you see, you just need to fill out the, uh, the different items to be filled out on this page and that will be good. There are three different levels to the task book. These are level one, level two, and level three. Each of the levels is divided into three sections, education, participation, and proficiency, and level three has an additional one of leadership. As you can see, there's a column labeled R O E. And this is required, optional, or encouraged. So if you see an O, like the first four items on level one, those are optional. Uh, Aries. Want you to have these? W Care says if you're going to be a, a, a member of the emergency communication, you, we need you to have those completed. But on this one, they say it is an option. Uh, the, under participation, you have two required items. One is obtain a task book. The second one is join an Aries group. Well, if you download the task book. You've already, if you filled out a WCARES membership form, you've already joined ARIES, so that's not an issue. The last one is obtain a technician class or higher amateur radio license. Well, we hope you're already there. So with those three things completed, you have already done level one of the task book. I think any of our members could easily, easily do that and be uh, level one qualified. Also at the bottom of this page, you will attach a copy of your FCC license. You can scan it in and then do an attachment uh, for that. This page, at the top of this page, you'll see it. Uh, you can sign it here that you have completed level one. And then at the bottom, this is where your emergency coordinator will sign his name showing that you have completed that. That will then be sent to me. I am the section six assistant section emergency coordinator for ARRL. I will look at it, endorse it, and then send it up to the section manager uh, who will then send it on up to the ARL headquarters. Level two builds on level one. It requires that you complete FEMA classes one, 100, 200, 700, and 800. You saw on level one that they were optional. If you're advancing to level two, they then become requirements and you will, you will have to complete those. You'll also see there's the ARRL EC-001 Intro to Emergency Communications. This is a ARRL online course that you will be required to take. Uh, it used to be a mentored class and it would take a probably three months or so to do that. I believe it is not mentored anymore and it's kind of work at your own pace. So uh, it's an excellent class for just your, your learning the basics of emergency communications. I, I strongly recommend that anybody uh, look take this course, but if you're gonna to go to level two, it is a requirement. Under participation, we have net participation once a quarter, which is required. That's also already a WCARES requirement, so you should have met that one. Under the proficiency skills, we have program a tone into a handy talkie, program frequency and offset into the radio, and I think that uh, each of us should be able to, to uh, be able to complete that one already. 
And under that is write and send an ICS-213 form. This is one of the FEMA forms. You can Google that form for further information. If you need help on how to write it and send it, uh, you can contact myself or Ed Hudgens, and we'd be glad to give you a hand. Below that, there are some encouraged items. Build a simple dipo, uh, build a power pole connection, solder a PL-259, and assemble a 24-hour deployment kit. Again, these are encouraged, not required, but uh, it's, it's good, good experience for anyone in emergency communication to be able to do these, these levels. Again, you will sign it and your EC will sign the bottom. On this one, you'll see there are numerous additional FEMA online classes required. I'm not gonna go over those now. You can uh, look them up on your own. Um, I, I should say at this point, if you're going to do the FEMA online classes, uh, they are now requiring you have a student ID number. I think you can Google FEMA student ID and it will take you to a page where you can apply for that number. So to take any of the tests for the online courses, you now have to have this student ID number and it's not at all, not at all hard to get, so it should be any problem. So you'll, re, you'll complete those classes and then at the bottom you will see the ARRL EC-016 Public Service and Emergency Communication Management course. Again, that is an ARRL online course. This one is definitely at your leisure. I recently took it and I completed about two months and not working on it near every day. So uh, it's, it's not hard at all. Uh, again, it's required, but even if you do, don't do the task book, uh, it's a very good course to have under your belt. Uh, there are a number of uh, optional ones. The main one is Skywarn. Now, I think on level two, it said Skywarn is a requirement, and here it's an optional. I don't understand why, but as a member of WCARES, one of the requirements is that you have your Skywarn training uh, once every other year. Down at the bottom, under participation, you will see uh, net participation once per quarter. Again, that's a WKR's requirement to stay on the roster, so there's no problem. Public service event participation, that means like a Harpeth River ride or any other activity uh, that WKR's takes part in, that would, that would suffice for the public service participation task. Under that, there's a simulated emergency test. This is held, I believe, in October. WKR's takes a part in that. So they are requiring you to have this done on a yearly basis, bi-yearly, I'm sorry, every other year. The other requirement is serve as net control. I know there's a lot of people that don't look forward to being net control operators. Uh, if you're gonna be level three, you, it's required, but it's not that hard. And I, I just suggest everyone, uh, at some point or another, jump in and just try your hand at net control. It's, it's not that bad. Under leadership, we have present a training session. This could be anything you do at uh, the monthly meeting. Uh, it could even be one that you videoed and put on uh, the website. It could be any length of time, uh, just some something showing that you are, are, are doing a training session. Underneath that is hold a leadership and position uh, in a group. So what they're asking for is uh, that you have held a, for an example, assistant emergency coordinator slot or something uh, along those lines to complete this task. The, the level three is really there for people that want to progress into a leadership role within or ARIES. That could be a, uh, emergency coordinator's position on up. Uh, so this entire task book, although we'd like everyone to get to level three, you can attain whatever level you're comfortable with and stop there. It's not necessary to complete the entire task book. Uh, we also have hold a, uh, hold a general class license or higher. That's an option, not required. 
and then participate in a PIO activity, which is a public information officer. So like at field day, when we have the, uh, the uh, table out front that has ARL brochures and stuff like that on it, uh, that would count or any place else that WCARES would make an appearance where uh, we have a, a PIO type position, you wanna jump in there and take advantage of, of that situation to, to complete this one. Again, you'll have it signed and your EC will sign below. In the middle, you'll see there is a proficiency and skills part. There are, what, five required ones? Uh, proficiency using the FEMA ICS forms. You can Google the FEMA ICS forms. It will bring them all up and uh, you can get a description of how to use them. You can contact myself, Laura, or Ed, or Jack Cox. There's numerous people that would be able to help you fill these forms out and learn how to use them. The next one is operate a VHF digital message station in peer-to-peer. -peer. Now this could be WIDLINK. Uh, we could do it peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, you contact me or Jack or Ed or someone, we can set up a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, session and complete that for you real quick. The next is operate an HF digital mode Manage it, messaging station. That is simply WinLink. Everyone in WCARES that is taking part in the emergency communication should be able to send a WinLink message. Again, uh, one of the members should be able to help you do that. Uh, the next one is tone, uh, again, program a tone into your HT and program frequency and offset in the HT. That was a requirement in one of the earlier levels. I don't know why they've uh, duplicated it here, but, but it is there. This is the, this is a page where your emergency coordinator has the ability to add classes that he sees fit for his ARIES group uh, beyond what the ARL is requiring. So he can, he can add educational participation leadership or proficiency skill that he wants you to see, then he can add the R, O, or E to that level uh, to have it completed. On this page is a copy of your FEMA transcript. FEMA has not entered the modern ages, so to acquire the transcript, you will have to physically write a letter to them. There is a there is an application form for the transcript that's on the FEMA website, but you do have to send it through the mail and then they will, uh, it, it, probably a week or so, they will send you your transcript. You would then scan it in and then affix it to the uh, task book at this location. On this page, we have some, it says common responsibilities. These are not items that will be completed uh, for the task book. These are simply things that if you were activated, that you would have to know how to do when you got to the uh, emergency scene or wh whatever you were deployed to. These are just some checklists that you should be comfortable with before you, you are deployed. This is a link to the task book. This is a fillable link. In other words, you can fill it out online. What I suggest you do is print a copy of the task book and as you complete it online, also check it off on the, the uh, physical copy and that way you'll have both of them. Uh, they're very, the online fillable form is very easy to, to do, there's no problem with that. Uh, or you can simply Google the ARL Aries task book fillable and it will bring it up. Now, if you have any questions, you can contact me at the email below, or you can contact Ed Hudgens again at his email address. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to look at the video. I hope that everyone will take the opportunity to, to take on the task book and complete it. So thank you for being here.